So this is a wonderful prophetic week we're in. And then having it marked by a blood moon, oh my, for such a time as this, we have come to, we have come to the kingdom. Welcome to the Believer's Voice of Victory. Today, Gloria Copeland and special guest Billy Brim discuss the historic events taking place in the heavens. Join them for more information on the blood moon eclipses and their parallel with holy days. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Believer's Voice of Victory. Billy's back, and she's got some great inspirational things for us. So welcome, Billy. We're glad to have you. Thank you, Gloria, and it is very inspirational. Now, if you're watching this, um, the first time it's broadcast on TV is going to be, of course, you could be watching archives or something else, yeah. but it's today as we broadcast, it is September 28th, 2015, and this is a most important day on God's calendar. And we're it together. Is, uh, yeah, we're together. We're together. And it is the first day of the seventh day, a seven day feast of tabernacles. Uh, actually, this one is particularly marked by the fourth moon, the fourth blood moon eclipse in the tetrad we've been watching. The four, when you have four blood moon full eclipses in a row, and there are another, none other lunar eclipses in the meantime, then it's called a tetrad. Mm -hmm. And they're pretty rare. But what's really rare is when they land on holy days, on mm. God's calendar, well. the marked days. And so we are just finishing a tetrad of blood moons last night, actually, in the nighttime, you could have seen it. Um, we had one. Uh, I'm going to show you uh, the blood moon chart we have. Um, on, um, in 2014, on Passover and Sukkot tabernacles, and then 2015 on Passover and Sukkot, and we're on Sukkot today, that's when these blood moon tetrads happened. So today is the 28th? Today is the 28th, and you would have seen it uh, in Fort Worth on the 27th at night, but depending on where you live, if you live in Greenwich Mean Time area or Universal Time area, it could be on the 28th. But Either way, whether you saw it on the 27th or the 28th, it is um, a God's day because the evening and the morning are the day with, the, with God's calendar. And so this is the... Um, 2015. This is 2015. It's the last blood moon tetrad. And we've been watching it really closely. You know, Brother Mark Biltz, Brother uh, John Hagee, and all of us have been marking these. We've done some special programming on this and you can get it on the archives of uh, Kenneth, of, of this BVOV. And so uh, it's interesting. We live in interesting times. Praise God. Now, uh, there is a calendar. God has a calendar. He doesn't go by the Gregorian calendar. He goes by um, his own calendar. He doesn't go by any of the, there were lots of calendars in the past, the Roman calendar. Sometimes calendars were kept by certain kings from the king's birth. But the calendar God goes by, he instituted in the word of God. And today is, in God's calendar, he has a civic year and he has a civil, uh, a sacred year. And the civil year began on Rosh Hashanah. Uh, that was the first day of the New Year's civil year, uh, the 13th and 14th of September. And now we are on Sukkot. These are the high holy days. If you'll show uh, God's sacred calendar, I'll get them to show that for you. In God's sacred calendar, which he instituted when they came out of Egypt, uh, on that sacred calendar, it's marked by sevens, of course, seven days in a week. And there are seven moeds or seven feast dates. And the first one is um, Passover. You're seeing it there on your screen. And at the same time as Passover is the Feast of Unleavened Bread. And then during that same week is the first fruits. 
Then you count 50 days and you're going to come on over to Pentecost. All those are in the springtime and early summer and they've been fulfilled. Then you have a period of a few months before you get to the high holy days that begin in the autumn. And we're now in those high holy days. They began with September 13 and 14, Rosh Hashanah. And then Yom Kippur or the Day of Atonement was uh, September 22nd, 23rd. And now right today we begin uh, Sukkot, Tabernacles. Tabernacles is all of these feasts in the fall are unfulfilled. All the first feasts, the first four are fulfilled. Jesus is the fulfillment of Passover, of, of uh, unleavened bread. He did away with sin. Of first fruits, he's the first fruits of resurrection. And then Pentecost came, you know, and the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. That's all fulfilled. Then you have a time, and now we're over in the autumn to the unfulfilled feasts. Uh, it is my personal belief that uh, perhaps the rapture of the church would come on Rosh Hashanah, the Feast of Trumpets. Um, but where we are right now, Sukkot, Tabernacles, this is the feast where God tells them over and over, you rejoice. You bring these palm fronds. You bring special fruit. You sing. You rejoice for seven days. So this time that we're in right now looks to when Jesus comes and sets up his earthly kingdom. The setting up of that kingdom actually will be done, I believe, during this feast. And he'll, there'll be great rejoicing and, uh, and there'll be, it'll be a year of jubilee. So this is a wonderful prophetic week we're in. And then having it marked by a blood moon, oh my, for such a time as this, we have come to, mm. we have come to the kingdom. Now, different things have happened on this date in the past. On this date, Sukkot, this Feast of Tabernacles, one of the things that happened on this date was the dedication of the first temple and the glory of the Lord moving into the Holy of Holies. So reading from 2 Chronicles 5, 1, thus all the work that Solomon made for the house of the Lord was finished and Solomon brought in all the things that David his father had dedicated, the silver and the gold and all the instruments put he among the treasures of the house of God. Then Solomon assembled the elders of Israel and all the heads of the tribe, tribes, the chief of the fathers of the children of Israel unto Jerusalem to bring up the ark of the covenant of the Lord out of the city of David, which is Zion. Wherefore, all the men of Israel, oh, I'm sure all the people of Israel would have been three million or more. Hmm. All the men of Israel assembled themselves unto the king in the feast, which was in the seventh month. We are in the seventh month of the sacred calendar year. We're in the first month of the civil calendar year. But this right time, right now, right this autumn, uh, almost 3,000 years ago, uh, this was happening out there on the hillsides in Jerusalem. You know, Mount Maria, where the temple sits, is a little bit lower than the other mountains around it. And uh, the Psalms say, as the mountains are round about Jerusalem, so the Lord is round about his people. So there's a ring of mountains that surround Jerusalem and Mount Maria. And for all those millions of people, they could not all have gotten on the Temple Mount. So you can just imagine, um, they're there on the Temple Mount, they're wearing white, 4,500 priests are there, blowing trumpets, and the people assembled on the hillsides all around watching. It was a glorious day. Oh, don't you and know? It just, it's going to just uh, preempt and, and prophesy that day that's coming. Second uh, Chronicles 5, now to verse 7. And the priests brought in the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord unto its place in the oracle of the house into the most holy place under the wings of the cherubim. Now down to verse 11. And it came to pass when the priests were come out of the holy place for all the priests that were present were sanctified and did not then wait by course, more than 4,500 of them. Also the Levites, which were the singers, all of them of Asaph, of Heman, of Yedithan, with their songs and their brethren, are weighed in white linen. It's sunny there in September. Mm. I can just see them in that sunshine on all those people wearing white. Praise God. Having cymbals and psalteries and harps, stood at the east end of the altar, and with them 120 priests sounding with trumpets. It came even to pass as the trumpeters and singers were as one, 
to make one sound to be heard in praising and thanking the Lord. And when they lifted up their voice with the trumpets and cymbals and instruments of music and praised the Lord, that's hallelujah, saying, for he is good, for his mercy mm-hmm. endureth forever. Hallelujah, ki tov, ki leolam, chasto. I like to say it in Hebrew. When they became one with one sound, then the house was filled with a cloud, even the house of the Lord, so that the priest could not stand to minister by reason of the cloud. Mm. For the glory of the Lord had filled the house of God. God. Mm. Today, September 28th, as we're showing this the first time live, 2015 is the anniversary date of that happening. According to templemount.org, that happened in 953 B.C., we, BCE, 2,968 years ago today. Uh, according to another source, different people have different ideas on the dating. Uh, 964 B.C., which would be 2,979 years ago. So you might say pretty nigh to 3,000 years ago, this is the anniversary of when the glory moved into that temple. Mm-mm. Now, the, book, the temple stood for about 400 years. And in 556 or something like that, uh, the temple, first temple was destroyed. It, w- it was destroyed. It, it, the glory moved in there. The glory, the Shekhinah glory, uh, the presence of God that could be seen was always seen right over that holy of holy like a cloud going straight up to heaven or a fire. Always seen. Always seen. <clears throat> always in view. You might not be able to go into the holy of holies if you're not the high priest, but you could see it was above the temple. Mm. And, uh, but in the book of Ezekiel, Ezekiel was a witness of the departure of that glory. About 500, I, don't quote me on this. I should have looked it up. But different people have different ideas anyway. I think it's about 546 B.C. So about 400 years later, the glory is going to depart the temple. And we went into that last week. It happened in the 30th year, in the fourth month, on the fifth of the month, Ezekiel said, as I was among the exile by the river Kivar, the heavens opened and I saw visions of God. That's the first part of the book of Ezekiel. Now, Ezekiel uh, went with a group of the elite Jews when Nebuchadnezzar came in, disposed the king, put in a puppet king, and uh, he took out Uh, from the Jews, their most brightest people, the cream of the crop. Daniel went, Ezekiel went. Now the the temple is not destroyed yet. And Ezekiel goes on over into um, the land uh, of captivity, Babylon. And he prophesies that the temple is going to be destroyed. He's not very popular with the people because the false prophets are saying, everything's going to be all right. The temple won't be destroyed. But then um, God takes him. He has several visions and God will lift him up and take him places. In Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 12, God's word translation says, Then the Spirit lifted me, and behind me I heard a loud thundering voice say, Blessed is the Lord's glory which left this place. So there comes um, a Mirkava. I want to read about this, and it's going to be in the uh, syllabus. I want to read about this glory of what, what he saw. And um, if you'll turn in this book right here to page, page 28. Ezekiel, you know the old song, Ezekiel saw the wheel way up in the middle of the air. He saw four living creatures and they formed something. I, 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 want, you to, um, I want you to listen to this that I got from a Hebrew source. He saw a chariot, a mirkava. Mirkava is the Hebrew word for chariot. It's used uh, many times in the Bible, not particularly here, but this is a mirkava. So uh, a mirkava is the throne chariot of God. What he's going to see here is a throne chariot, the Mm -hmm. four-wheeled vehicle driven by four chayot. In the Hebrew, it means living creatures, each of which has four wings and the four faces of a man, lion, ox, and eagle. The word Mirkava is found 44 times in the Old Testament. Um, It's not actually written here in Ezekiel 1, but the Jews call this the Mirkava. 
Now, here's the thing that I'd kind of forgotten this fact, and I've got it here in, these, in this page. Jews customarily read the biblical passages concerning the Mirkava in their synagogues every year on Shavuot. So here we are on Shavuot, and we're reading about it. Well, So we're right in line here. According to the verses in Ezekiel, uh, the analogy of the Mirkava image consists of a chariot made up of many angels being driven by the likeness of a man. Four angels form the basic structure of the chariot. These angels are called the Hayot, the living creatures. The bodies of the Hayot are like that of a human with four faces. Each one has four faces, corresponding to the four directions the chariot can go, north, south, east, and west. The faces are of a man, a lion, an ox, later changed to a cherub and an eagle. Since there are four angels and each has four faces, there are a total of 16 faces. Each Hayot mm. angel also has four wings. Two of these wings spread across the length of the chariot and connected with the wings of the angel on the other side. This created a sort of box of wings that formed the perimeter of the chariot. Now, I did not ask uh, the guys in the truck to put a picture of this, but we could have them put one up. And so you see that little picture right there, Gloria, yeah. at the top? You see how it forms? And um, now these are uh, driven... There's a, a, a creature with the likeness of a man, fire from his loins up, fire from his loins down, and it's a throne. It's a throne chariot. And he comes in with this chariot. And the, the reason for this chariot is to escort the glory out of the temple. The glory that came 400 years before is now going to depart because God's going to let the temple be destroyed. And the temple could never be destroyed if the glory, the Shekinah glory was there. Mm. So we see, uh, we started reading already in the third chapter of Ezekiel, uh, that it's going to start to go up. The glory is going to go up. Um, Ezekiel, Ezekiel 3, 12, God's word. Then the spirit lifted me and behind me, I heard a loud thundering voice say, blessed is the Lord's glory, which left this place. Now we read in Ezekiel 10, 4, then the glory of the Lord went up from the cherub and stood over the threshold of the house. And the house was filled with the cloud, not just the Holy of Holies. It's moving out of the Holy of Holies. And the court was full of the brightness of the Lord's glory. Then in verse 18, the glory of the Lord departed from the threshold of the house and stood over the cherubim. And the cherubim, um, it, it explains how the, it moves. And then in Ezekiel 11:22, it says, Then did the cherubim lift up their wings and the wheels beside them, the chariot. And the glory of the Lord of Israel was over them. The glory is over the chariot. And the glory of the Lord went up from the midst of the city and stood upon the mountain which on, is on the east side of the city, and that is the Mount of Olives. And from there it went up. It was never in the second temple. Uh, it departed the first temple. And, um, but Ezekiel's prophecy goes right on over to when the glory returns. And in Ezekiel chapter 40 in the millennial temple and the restoration of Jerusalem, Ezekiel 43, 1, Afterward he brought me to the gate, the gate that looks toward the east, and behold, the glory of the Lord of Israel came from the way of the east, comes back down on Mount of Olives, and his voice was like a, no a voice of many waters, and the earth shined with his glory. Mm -hmm. And the glory of the Lord, verse 4, came into the house by the way of the gate, whose prospect is toward the east. So um, we see the glory of the Lord return. And uh, concerning Ezekiel, he prophesied in the first chapters, Israel, you did a bad thing, and the glory departed. And then uh, they're, they're, they're so, they didn't believe him at first. And then when they saw that a runner came one day, and a runner said, the temple's been destroyed. He was an escape. He had escaped, you know, from the destruction. Then the people started beginning to believe Ezekiel, and Ezekiel became their priest, prophet during the exile. And the middle part then of Ezekiel uh, had to do with judgment of the nations, and then the last part has to do with the future. And we're going to get into that this week. We're going to go into it. A refugee came from the uh, destruction in Jerusalem, and then uh, tomorrow we're going to read from a, a wonderful book. Um, it's out of print. It's called Mother of the Pound. Hmm. Uh, if you could get, it's by David Kazaz, 
And if you could get a copy by tomorrow, that would be a wonderful thing. But th th you see, when Ezekiel went and the, and the people that were into um, exile went to the Babylonian captivity, they came over to the Babylonian captivity. They came to be a community of millions. When it was, uh, Babylon was conquered by the Persians and Cyrus said, you can go back and build the second temple, only 42,000 went. The majority of the people stayed in Babylon. And Babylon was the biggest community of Jews mm. on the earth. Well. And they stayed there until 19, probably about 48, when uh, the Jews became, they got their land back and then they were, the, the Iraqi Jews were kicked out. But you'll want to come tomorrow and you'll want to listen tomorrow when we look at the book, The Mother of the Pound, because it's the story of a, a people who lived there all that time. And we're going to find some things out about Ezekiel. We're going to see his tomb. And we're going to see how they revered him during that time. And there are so many things told in that book, Gloria. I was talking to you in the, on the way down here about it. I've always wondered why Jesus said this. He said, when you go into a house, he said this to the 70, uh, put, leave your peace on this house. And if they don't treat you right, go and take your peace with you. Well, in this group of Babylonian Jews, and I found it in this book, they believed that when you went into a place, there were some peace angels. Shalom. And you would say, Shalom Aleichem, peace upon you. And uh, if you uh, departed, they didn't treat you right, you could say, peace angels depart. So they believed that a certain um, uh, peace came on a house or came upon you. That's what Jesus said when he came back and greeted the disciples after he rose from the dead. Shalom, mm -hmm. peace upon you. Alechem. We sing, Avena Shalom, Alechem. So in this book, Mother of the Pound, which we're going to read some from tomorrow, we're going to get a picture of Ezekiel and a picture of life in the Babylonian that exile. Be interesting. It'll be very interesting. Open some eyes for you. Did mine. Good. Well, we'll be ready and looking forward to that, Billy. Thank you. Well, don't miss tomorrow, you know. Billy's going to share some things we might not have heard before, would be my guess. <laughs> Probably. Billy and I'll be back in just a moment. Download your free copy of the BVOV broadcast study notes now at kcm.org slash notes. Use them to follow along with the broadcast during your personal time or for group Bible study. Now you can put your ears and eyes on God's message of victory to plant it deep in your heart. We're believing this additional ministry tool will benefit you, bless your study time, and will help you to grow from faith to faith. Go to kcm.org slash notes today. We're here for you. The Book of Ezekiel, an ancient book of prophecies, visions, and signs from thousands of years ago, now coming to pass before your eyes. The Book of Ezekiel study package will open your eyes to this ancient book, the Jewish prophet who penned it by God's Spirit, and the importance of its message to you today. Unlock the mysteries that the Bible says are to come. Dr. Billy Brim's study syllabus on the book of Ezekiel and Yehezkel, a new translation from the Hebrew commentary. Two strong resources for your in-depth Bible study. Bible prophecy like you have never seen before. Learn the glory of God that runs through the book of Ezekiel. Receive useful insight into the book of Ezekiel with the book of Ezekiel study package for only $39.99. Go to kcm.org slash TV special or when you call 800-600-7395. This is a time to be courageous. Understand the book of Ezekiel and how Israel, the nations, and the church fit into God's end time events. Equip yourself with the word and be ready for Jesus' return. Gain important information about end time events with the book of Ezekiel package for only $39.99. Log on to kcm.org slash TV special or call 800-600-7395. The book of Ezekiel reveals God's plan for Israel and the nations. It gives us insight into our present day. 
and helps us prepare for the future. Billy, tell us some things about the That's exactly right, Gloria, product. because Jesus said, watch the fig tree, watch Israel. Yes, watch, he and He said, watch the other trees, yes, which are the nations. Mm -hmm. So we're going to see Israel and the nations in the book of Ezekiel. Uh, this is the book of Ezekiel as translated by uh, Hebrew speakers who've been speaking it for years. And you'll have the English translation, you'll have the Hebrew here, and then you have lots of commentaries that give you historical facts and some things you'll agree with and some you won't. But it's a very enlightening. And then I've done a study, a syllabus for the book of Ezekiel. And a lot of the things I'm talking about and showing on here are in here. Gloria. Uh, That's is, my copy, right? Well, it's not finished yet. This is a dummy up copy. Don't tell anybody. Well, I don't though. want a dummy copy. And um, uh, here, I, the, the, here are the Ezekiel stones. We're going to talk about those next week. Good. I mean, tomorrow. And the, Ezekiel saw the glory leave the temple. He saw it come back. So this will have a lot of good uh, information for you. Stu notes, not only notes and an outline of study, but a lot of good pictures and things to see. Good, good. So it'll be available by the time this is aired. Oh, yes. Well, You'll get I this. want my copy. Okay. Glory to God. Glory to God. I want to pray for you today. Billy and I are going to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray for every person listening today. We ask you, Lord, the, the desire of their heart, whatever their desire of their heart is, that you reveal to them your will in that matter and reveal to them how to pray and receive it, if it be your will. And we thank you, Lord, for healing people, delivering people. We thank you for healing and delivering all of us, for enlightening us, for helping us to understand the marvelous Amen. things that we have in the Word of God. And we give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. The study notes uh, for the broadcast are available on our website. Isn't that good of Billy to share her notes? Billy covers a lot of information. These are great notes to have. And all the scriptures and key points are in the notes. So I'm, I expect to get my share, Billy. Go to kcm.org slash notes. Download your free copies and follow along with us every day. She gave me a copy already, and you're going <laughs> to like this. You're going to want this. This is Gloria and Billy reminding you that Jesus, Jesus is Lord. Kenneth Copeland Ministries is here for you. Watch the Believer's Voice of Victory anytime on our website, kcm.org. Remember to download your free copy of the study notes at kcm.org notes. You'll have access to all the scriptures, prayers, and key teaching points for each of the broadcasts. Continue to grow in the Word with this week's product offer, be sure to order yours today. Build your faith with these word-based teaching materials. Jesus has opened the door for your victory. Come to a Kenneth Copeland Ministries event. October 16th and 17th, get involved at the 2015 Living Victory Anaheim Faith Encounter with Kenneth Copeland and Kelly Swisher in Anaheim, California. October 16th through 17th, Terry Copeland Pearsons invites you to the Spirit-Led Prayer Conference in Red Deer, Alberta, Canada. The 2015 Washington, D.C. Victory Campaign, November 12th through 14th with Kenneth and Gloria Copeland at the Hilton Memorial Chapel in Woodbridge, Virginia.